Welcome to this next video in the How Do I series of Microsoft Dynamics NAS 2013 R2. This video will be about setting up web client, Windows client, NAS and web services on separate server tiers. I am Erik Wouters, or Waldo, and I'm creating this video in collaboration with Platan. At the end of this video, you will be able to set up the different NAV services on different tiers. The objective of this video is getting you familiar with the tools and all the things that you need to take into, into account when setting up all these different services. We are going to do this in five steps. Let's first look at our environment and have a look at what we want to end up with. So as you can see, this is a default installation of one tier, the Dynamics Nav 7 one tier, and activated all services. So I have my client services running, I have my web services running, my OData services are running, the NAS is in this case not running, it's a default installation, and I have my management services part. Now let's have a look at what I mean when I want to set this up with different service tiers. This is what I want to end up with. I have different tiers with all different tasks. Like I have got the Win Client tier, all my Windows clients will connect to this tier, my web services will connect to this tier, my OData to this tier, the NAS will run on this, this one, and last but not least, I have a web client tier where my web client will connect to. As you can see, I still have the default instance, but it is stopped and it is disabled. It is actually a bad practice to delete the default instance as when you are, for instance, upgrading your platform to a new build of NAV, you actually can do that in a quite simple way, but you still need the default instance for that. So it's a good practice to, to keep it, but disable it and yeah, don't use it. Now all these tiers point to the same databases. As you can see, it's all the same database, but only the services are enabled that need to be enabled. Like in my Windows client, I enabled the client services, but for the web service, the OData and the NAS is disabled. This has been done for all these instances. Now, how do I start doing this? So I return back to my default instance and I want to install all my different NAV services to different service tiers. First, let's prepare our environment. First of all, I need to load, obviously, the, uh, the module for the NAV administration in PowerShell. Here you go, so now I'm able to use the commandlets for NAV. I've got my default service tier now, the Dynamics NAV 7.1. I don't want to remove it, I want to keep it, but I'm going to disable it. And I do that by just stopping the service instance. And I'm using actually just a, a Windows commandlet. For this, I'm going to get the service with the same instance name and I'm going to disable it. Let us just quickly check the service. You see it is disabled. So next, let's set up a Windows client service tier that will only take care of the Windows clients. Now we can obviously do that in the administration console, like we can add an instance, give it a name and all ports. Now what this little tool does is it's going to create a default instance again, and I don't want that. I want specific services being added. And this is actually much simpler with PowerShell. In fact, the only thing I need to do is use the new nav server instance commandlet, give it a name. I give the name win client tier as this is going to be the tier for my Windows clients. I always have to provide the management services part. So I keep this one uh, default, 7045. And then I'm going to provide the client services port. And this is the only thing I need to provide for a tier that is being used for the Windows clients. So let's do that. And when we go back to our administration console, you'll see that there was a new instance being created, being the Win client tier. Now, because of the fact that I only provided the port for the client services, this service is the only one that is enabled. If we, for instance, look at the SOAP services, it is not enabled. I didn't provide the port for that. The OData or the NAS is not enabled either. Now let us start this and test. 
it will now try to connect to the default instance, the Dynamic Snuff 7.1, but I disabled that one, so it's not going to be able to connect. Here is our error message, and we are going to connect to the win client here, which is providing me the companies, and I'm able to log in. Now, in the same way, we can set up different service tiers for the web services and for our data services. Again, we are going to use the new NAV server instance commandlet. We are going to give two new names, being the web service tier name and the OData tier. Every time we need to provide the management services port and we need different ones, else we're going to have conflicts. So we use new port numbers for the management services port. For the web service tier, I'm going to have to provide the SOAP services port. And for the OData tier, I have to provide the OData services port. So let's set this up and check it in our management console. You see that the two new services are set up. Let's start these ones. Now to test it, to make it easy on me, I can just go to the web services table and create a new web service. Let's create a web service on page 21 and publish it. When I publish it, you'll see that it's going to provide me a new URL to the, uh, the web services, in this case to the data and in that case to the web service. And you'll see that it's going to point to the win client tier. Now this is because of the fact that I'm logged in into the win client tier. But we know obviously that this is not going to work because I did not set up web services on the win client tier service instance. You'll see that it doesn't work. We need the web services tier here for this. And it has got a different port, so I need this port as well. And this is the one that will actually work. We need to do the same for the OData. Like it's going to give me the OData URL like it would have been on the win client tier. Let's change that to the OData tier. And we need the 7248 for that. And here is my feed. Now these services specifically run for web services and or data. If I, for instance, try to connect to the web services tier, on any port, it will not be available. I didn't enable the client services, which means I cannot connect with the Windows client to this tier. Now let's see how to set up a NAS on a dedicated server instance. For NAS, we have a few things to, to take into account. First of all, the service account. A NAS needs to log in with a certain user and it's going to execute the code with the permissions of that user. Next, when I want to set up a NAS, I have to provide a few extra parameters like the service's default company. A NAS always needs a company to log into to get the data for which it wants, uh, it wants to read and a setting for the NAS, like uh, a startup argument, a startup code unit, or whatever. What I'm going to do is set up the job queue, and for this, I'm going to set up a startup code unit of 450. Now, when we know all this, we can also put this into some kind of PowerShell script, like this. I'm going to create a credential, the credential of Waldo. I'm going to use that credential in the new NAS server instance in the parameter service account credential. Again, I'm going to use new port numbers uh, for the management services port, and I'm going to call my new server instance NAS tier. Now for the settings that I mentioned, I'm going to change the key service default company, and I'm going to provide the code unit that I want to start. So let's do this. I have to provide the password for my credential. And here we go. Let us check. My NAS tier has been created. The services default company has been filled in. My NAS services have got a startup code unit, so it's going to start it. So let us start this one and check if my job queue was enabled or not. And here you can see that, in fact, my job queue has started. And it has been started 
on the instance now steer. So my job queue is working and it is working in fact on a dedicated server instance. Now the last thing we need to do is setting up a dedicated service tier for our web client. Now the web client works kind of like the same as the Windows client. It's going to connect to the client services. So that part is actually kind of like the same as we did for creating a dedicated server instance for the Windows client. But we have to, our, we have to point our web server instance to that dedicated server instance. What we will do is use the new nav server instance commandlet for creating again a new server instance for client services. Again, we are using new ports and we are using the new nav web server instance to create a new nav web server instance. Obviously, we are going to do that on the local host server and we are going to call it Cronus Web Client. And as you can see, we are going to point to the newly created server instance, web client here, and to that port. So let's do this. This is all to it. And let me check our administration console. My new web client here has been configured. So let me start this. And now I should be able to connect to the web client. Now that shortcut is the default one, and as you can see, it's going to connect to the default web server instance. Now I created a new one, namely the Cronus web client. So let us put that in the URL and connect to the web client. And in this case, my web client is going to connect to the dedicated server instance that I created for web client only. Now, this concludes my five steps in setting up separate service tiers for all NAV services. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.